We talk a lot about the benefits of the cloud. Uh, I think especially Onshape does that you can skip an expensive workstation uh, and you can access it from anywhere. I think a, a legitimate but less talked about argument for going to the cloud for solid modeling is you don't have to buy or maintain a server. So if you're a small outfit, uh, you uh, don't have to worry about proper maintenance of a server because if you under maintain a server, you're probably a lot more, you know, less secure, I should say, than something like this, which is encrypted. So when it comes to the cloud, some of the drawbacks are you can't tune your hardware like you could with a desktop install, right? So if I need more performance, I can't do a bunch of local tweaks to my settings to try to get more performance out of it or get a bigger processor, graphics, anything like that. I'm completely dependent on what Dassault is providing me. So I want to test the performance uh, with just a heavy part and see how uh, X-Design stacks up against Onshape, which would stack up against a local install of, say, SolidWorks. I'm going to get a new component. We'll call this worst case. Uh, notice my keyboard monitor up here so you can see the keystrokes that I use if you're curious. Let's start sketching on this plane. Oh. We're going to add in a horizontal relation. I'm doing a circle intentionally because circles um, require a lot of graphics, right? There's more graphical triangles. So if I type in 1.5 inches and I want to change my units, X-Design does a very nice job of just updating the units on the fly without booting me out of the sketch. SolidWorks could learn a thing or two from that. It is really convenient. So good, good on X sign for that. Let's do a extrude at, uh, let's go one inch. Okay, or 11, one inch here. And uh, that looks good. Let's do a array. We're gonna select this feature to pattern. We're gonna do it normal to this plane. We're gonna space that 1.5 inches and we're gonna do that 50 times. I think there's something that I messed up with my intended sketch. Let me go back into my sketch here. There we go, let's make that one inch. Okay, now I can go into my linear, linear pattern. Let's edit this feature. And I'm gonna grab a stopwatch and stick it right there. Uh, let's specify another direction, normal to this plane also at a distance of 1.5 inches. And we're gonna do a, let's say a 50 by 50. And we're gonna see how long it'll take to generate this pattern and become responsive again. And I'm gonna time that on my watch here. So we're gonna start and there we go, we're off. So we've generated it in about 25 seconds and now I'm just waiting for this to be responsive like I should be able to right click on some of these and have a menu come up and that's not coming up yet Well, it's been 15 minutes and I'm getting just no progress here. It will sometimes update a view, but I'm trying to edit my tree and I'm just getting nothing from the tree. I haven't for 15 minutes. I guess this thing is just dead in perpetuity. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to call it. We're going to see if Onshape can do this within 15 minutes. Here we are in Onshape. I'm gonna sketch on the same plane here. And let's make a circle. 
and we'll give that horizontal and make this one inch 1.5 now we'll uh, choose to extrude depth of one inch is good solid new and then uh, there's our feature there we go so we have sketch extrude let's go with a patterned array we're going to choose this as an entity to pattern uh, we'll go with the right plane as a direction to pattern distance is going to be 1.5 our instance is going to be 50 Let's choose a second direction. We're going to go here and 1.50. Oh, <laughs> and we want 1.5. And then uh, we'll go when I hit the uh, green check here. And we're going. Wow, that was quick. I can respond here. But I don't yet have my right click. So I think we're, oh, look at that, my right click happened. So that happened in 18 seconds. Well, I don't know, it doesn't seem fully responsive yet. There we go. I can edit that, wow, that was, 30 seconds or less. So, uh, Onshape was pretty quick. Why don't we take a look at SolidWorks and see how SolidWorks performs. So here we are in the uh, part uh, environment of SolidWorks. I'm going to change my units to inches. We're going to grab the top plane and start a sketch. I'll put a point on the origin. We're going to grab a circle. And we're going to make that horizontal. We're going to make this one inch in diameter. And we'll go one inch over here. Looks good. Features, extrude. And we're going to go to one inch. And now we want to do a linear pattern. We want to make sure to pattern this in bodies, right? Otherwise, we'll get an error since SolidWorks is a little bit different. It probably goes back to the... Uh, Katia kernel that powers X design versus the parasolid kernel that runs SolidWorks. Uh, we'll choose a plane normal for our direction here, and that, that'll be the right plane. We're going to say inch and a half here. Uh, we already have a pattern of 50. Now in direction 2, we'll choose another plane, uh, this time being the front plane. And uh, 1.5 should do. Look how fast that uh, preview goes. So I'm going to time this again. So I got my stopwatch right here, and here we go. And it looks like uh, in just under four seconds, we've had something that we can interact with and right click with. So I think it's pretty clear that SolidWorks is extremely high performing uh, in terms of being in graphics. You know, these multi-body parts, it took on shape, I don't know, 30 to 50 seconds to do the same thing. It took X Design 15 minutes and it still wasn't responding. So <laughs> uh, I think that there's a place for having um, a high performance local install and there's a place for having the convenience of accessing these things from anywhere on most devices. There's still a question does the hardware that I use? On cloud software affect the performance so in a future video I think I want to go through seeing if I can do a part like this that is a worst case part that isn't typical of what you would see and trying it with bad hardware and good hardware and seeing what the results are so we are in fusion 360 on the cloud I thought as kind of an afterthought that I would add this in I don't think if I remember correctly this is quite fully developed um, and so I don't know if what I'm doing is a fair fight or not but I'm interested to know how this is going to do compared to the other platforms and SolidWorks that we just saw 
So let's get this running here. I'm adding a horizontal constraint and my, my circle went really small there. So I'll uh, make this, this is in millimeters. I haven't yet looked on how to convert. So I'm just gonna say 25.4 and then an inch and a half, that's 38.1. Uh, I think that's all we need because we have the horizontal constraint. So we'll go back to create and do an extrude and we'll extrude that a distance of 25.4 and we'll make sure that our profile here, yep. Okay, now uh, let's do a pattern and for that we'll go create pattern, rectangular pattern and we want to do bodies and not faces kind of like in SolidWorks. Our objects will be here, and I want uh, 38.1 and 38.1. And we, instead of extent, we want to have a spacing pattern. And our uh, directions, I want to go here. And oh, it looks like it automatically knew the other direction, so that's really nice. And then I want to say uh, 50 by 50 and that's really nice it looks like the preview kind of gives you a <laughs> a checked box preview instead of actually showing and it looks like it's just gonna update as it goes uh, but I don't necessarily need to time the preview I just need to time the end product so I've got a little stopwatch here let's start okay Looks like something's happening. Wow, so that was about six minutes. I think I was a little bit late on the pause button there. But what was very interesting is I observed that this thing, uh, even while generating these bodies, had right-click functionality. And it showed me updating as it went. Uh, that, I was not expecting uh, the platform to actually show me the th the bodies being built uh, but that that was helpful on a lot of ways because it it helped me see that it was still working it wasn't locked up or indefinitely frozen and I still had right click functionality and I could change my view as I went so I think that's why it took a little bit longer so I think it took a little bit of processing power to have me show it working preserve the uh, view uh, as I went and also preserve the right click and other functions uh, so it wasn't quite as fast, but uh, it was pretty interesting to watch it get built and have the peace of mind that it was still working. Uh, that's a really beautiful way to program it, uh, even though it's not quite as efficient. Well, I uh, edited this video, got it all ready for upload, and then I decided, you know what, I have to do FreeCAD, and I have to edit it in, and I have to do a re-render, but... I'm pretty curious as to how this will perform on the uh, desktop. So why don't we head on over to the sketcher and we'll run this through from the part workbench. I'm gonna create a sketch now. Uh, I guess I have to create a new document first. Create a sketch on the top plane. I'll add in a circle. We'll add in a horizontal dimension at 1.5 inches and we'll give this a radius of 0.5 for a one inch diameter. Move this out a little bit more and uh, we'll close, switch to part and extrude our sketch. We're gonna go a distance of one inch and then to the uh, draft workbench. Delete my grid of course and I don't think that actually went. It didn't. There we go, I have to highlight that first. And then in our array, this is where the fireworks start to happen. We're gonna say, uh, interval of X, we wanna be 1.5 inches. And our number in the X direction is gonna be 50. And then in the Y direction, we want to say the interval in the y direction is 1.5 inches and number in the y direction I'm 
I'm going to say 50. I'm going to hit enter and start. And I can't tell if we're rebuilding or not. Nope, we have to rebuild. Okay, false, false start. We're going to clear that. And uh, I'm going to start and uh, rebuild this as quick as I can. Uh, this could get tricky here. Start, rebuild. So I started about one second. Whoa, we are already uh, done. That that must have been faster than SolidWorks. I started at exactly one second, and I think we were done at three seconds. That I was not expecting that. And I I will say in previous videos and older versions of FreeCAD, it took forever uh, to rebuild some of this stuff. So either FreeCAD's gone a long way, or I've done a test that uh, doesn't really reflect on the past experiences I've had of FreeCAD taking a a long time to build. Either way, in an apples to apples comparison, that was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it again just to just to watch the show. So if we go back to one, rebuild, and then we say 50, rebuild. Wow, that's quick. <laughs> well, congrats to FreeCAD. I think in an apples to apples comparison, it uh, it took the cake on that. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think this goes to show overall that there is a place for a desktop installation when you need high graphical performance and there's a place for the cloud where you need convenience but I don't think it should be confused or substituted that the cloud is going to be as high performing as a desktop. I think there are limitations there that we would accept and uh, just deal with the. I think there's a place for both still. Uh, thank you so much for watching and a big congratulations and shout out to Onshape. I think that is our highest performing cloud based software. And that was uh, it, by a large margin, it was the fastest one to produce this array and become responsive again. So, congratulations to Onshape. Uh, I think they have. Uh, I think one of the strongest kernels for modeling and one of the fastest uh, rebuild times it's been able to make stuff that I couldn't make otherwise with other things. Fusion 360 I think had the coolest and most interesting rebuild of any platform in my opinion on this series. To watch it rebuild was really cool and uh, really amazing and I should I, I think I want to uh, throw some more stuff at Fusion 360 and see how it compares with uh, X-Design and some of the other uh, platforms. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.